It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, January 12th, 2012. I am James Burns, and before I play the Bob Chapman interview for you all, I just want to let you know that during the interview, in several instances, Bob Chapman was cut off. I even lost my internet at one point, and it's a very obvious sign that the government is listening, monitoring our conversation and everyone else's conversation. So before we start, I wanted to say hello to the government. I'm so thrilled about my tax dollars going towards this criminal, corrupt police state. Well, Bob, that was interesting. Uh, here on the uh, radio for like uh, five seconds and then got dropped again. So <laughs> a new record for us. Well, that happens all the time. And uh, there's not too much we can do about it. And it'll probably get worse. Yeah, most likely. But uh, first off, I'd like to uh, talk with you today about what uh, transpired in New Hampshire. Somewhat good news. You had uh, Ron Paul come in second place with 23%. Romney had the commanding lead at 39%. Do you, do you think this is a positive sign as to the direction we're going? Or do you think that there was possibly some shenanigans that might have had Ron Paul end up more favorably than he did uh, by the mainstream media? Well, I think the big push was uh, Huntsman. Uh, he was uh, sponsored by the Boston Globe, and uh, it's the biggest newspaper in New England. And uh, they um, tried to convince people that Huntsman was a better representative for them as a, quote, conservative than Paul was, and that was justification for pushing uh, his ballot numbers up, and uh, the votes for him increased. Uh, but I, I don't think uh, that's really the answer uh, from what I saw happen in Iowa. You know, we had um, uh, Centaurum. Um, he moved from 2% to 24.5%, which is statistically impossible. And um, and so there's a little rigging going on. On top of that, uh, there are films, I, I just looked at it, uh, of the people who were handling the balloting, giving out ballots in the names of people who were deceased. Now, uh, I think that based upon that alone, that it happened the way it did, that <clears throat> what should be done is the whole election should be thrown out. Because we know it was rigged. The question is, you know, how extensively. And coming on the heels of Iowa and uh, the pulling of votes from one candidate to another, uh, the, the, the balloting doesn't mean anything. The whole thing is rigged. Uh, it just seems more and more apparent, Bob, that you know the elections are becoming like a, a national version of Chicagoland with the way they do elections now. Well, that looks like the, the way it is, and I guess we're not going to get any fair elections as long as the Republican National Committee and the people who control them continue to do what they're doing, commit fraud. Uh, we saw it during the uh, years that that we saw uh, George Bush in office. In fact, they even sent their crew down to Mexico to rig the elections down there, which they did very effectively. It won't happen again, but it was obvious what happened. And uh, so, uh, again, we live with a criminal, out criminal element in Washington uh, and the same characters who run everything. And they're going to continue to do what they're doing as long as they want, and there's no law to stop them. And uh, I often wonder, uh, are the Illuminists in Washington and New York City, are they anxious to have a revolution 
I, I wonder, you know. If they are, I think maybe they might be making a mistake because if they have a revolution, if the military doesn't go with the government, they cook gooses. Interesting. It is interesting, and I think if they actually are crazy enough to want to pick a fight with the American people, I mean, they, they, they must have some serious issues there. They must have been... You know, smoking some really good stuff over the years or, you know, on all sorts of big pharma medication. But despite the lies, despite their best efforts to try and belittle the Ron Paul campaign in Iowa and New Hampshire, I mean, it's it's becoming more and more apparent that Ron Paul is the only real choice that America has to turn things around in this country. And you're going to have Huntsman. You're going to have the rest of them. They're going to fall by the wayside. And there, so many of them are putting everything they have into uh, South Carolina right now that I think after, what, the 21st, uh, most of them are going to be out of the race. I think you're right. Um, whether Ron Paul could uh, become the candidate uh, remains to be seen. It's, it's after seeing the rigging by the Republican National Committee. This is who did the rigging. This is who paid people off. I mean, who else would do such a thing? I mean, stop and think about it. You don't have to have any proof. We know what they did. So, in a two-horse race, would they allow Ron Paul to win? We're going to find out. But I'll tell you, if they steal this from him, and I'm a big backer of his, as you well know, I hope that he goes with a third party and just pulls the legs right out from underneath him. I hope so as well. I mean, I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope that uh, those that are belittling Ron Paul, demonizing him on the Republican side, finally, eventually, somehow, before it's too late, wake up and have a reality check and realize the mistake they're making. Not only are they you know, going after Ron Paul, but they're also insulting all those supporters, all these new Republicans that could actually benefit the Republican Party in the long run. And I agree with you, Bob. I think this stinks from you know, the higher-ups of the GOP. And a lot of people have been asking me this question regarding Mitt Romney. How is Mitt Romney doing so well? They asked me about that a couple weeks ago of Iowa. They asked me about that uh, the other day with uh, New Hampshire. How is it that people are actually going to the, to the polls in these states and actually voting for this slime ball? Uh, because uh, they're told that he can win and Ron Paul can't. And uh, that's the best way for them to go to get a Republican in office. And they don't understand that there no longer is a two-party system. There's only a one-party system. Very simple. And so with that said, uh, you know, what are we talking about here? We're talking about something that doesn't mean anything anymore. But these people don't understand that. Just simply don't understand it. And it's a shame. Uh, yeah, it we're is. all going to pay for it. And I, for too long now, I mean, they've had this mindset, not, not just Republican voters, but Democrat voters are just as guilty of this. I have to vote for the winner. I have to vote for the winner. Whoever the mainstream media and the uh, party establishment tells me to vote for, I'm going to vote for because they're the winner. They don't even bother to go look at the other candidates. They don't even bother to go look at their track record or their platform or where they stay on the issues. They just go and vote for uh, Mitt Romney because he has an R by his name, and that actually means something to these people when the truth is he's, he couldn't even be further from uh, being a true conservative. I mean, this guy has flipped and flopped on so many things, Bob, and his ties to bank capital and all the shenanigans he pulled when he was governor of Massachusetts. I mean, are these people brain dead? Uh, yes. But there is a segment of them who are not brain dead. And uh, that segment uh, were the group of people who, since the mid-1960s, have uh, been accumulating weapons. Uh, we saw record weapon sales in November, and then a bigger record in December. So, you know, pray tell, what does that mean? Well, it means that people are wondering, uh, will we have to 
perhaps fight to save ourselves? And uh, it's a good question. Obviously, a lot of them think that uh, they're going to have to do that. And uh, I think uh, we're, we're looking at a, a situation where pe- pe- people are preparing for the worst. So there is an element that really understands. And, uh, you know, these people aren't buying 30, 32 or, or 38 caliber weapons. Uh, and they're buying 7.62 and 223s and everything else. Um, uh, it's, it's going to head toward a showdown. How long will it take? Uh, I don't know. Uh, if Ron Paul is elected, uh, they could give us eight years or more. Uh, if he's not elected, um, go out and practice. <laughs> well, people should be practicing anyways. I mean, just to make sure you know how to use a firearm properly because, I mean, if you don't know how to use one, it can be even more dangerous to you to, than uh, you know, any would-be uh, assailants. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is the international forecaster.com. And uh, one of the um, things that could cause a collapse in everything going bad is what might happen in uh, the economic field, Bob. And what is the uh, forecast right there so far? Well, I think uh, contrary to what most bloggers uh, believe, uh, that the, the year that we're now in is going to be different. And uh, the reason why, and most people don't understand this who are professionals, uh, most of Wall Street thought we'd grow 2 to 3% this year. And I thought it would be minus 1.5 until something happened. And uh, I changed my estimate from minus 1.5 to minus to plus 1.5 to plus two in that area. And the reason why is uh, potentially Europe has about $10 trillion. Uh, Not to go through all the gymnastics of how that works out, maybe even more. And they've already started buying treasury paper. You saw the auction uh, yesterday, which uh, was 3.5 to one. I think it's usually 3.42 on the cover which is very, very good. I mean, two to one is fine. And uh, you've got a lot of people out there uh, who are, uh, particularly in Europe in this case, uh, who are uh, still very concerned about the future of the Euro and the Eurozone and the European Union. And uh, they perceive that the dollar is uh, stronger and should be stronger than the euro and other currencies. And so they are uh, buying the dollar uh, denominated assets, and uh, that's simply not surprising. The uh, dollar has been strong as of late, and uh, the reason for that uh, is that there's been weakness at uh, at the euro, uh, and, th- and that weakness in the euro is going to continue. In fact, uh, they have a number of uh, Greek, Greek labor union leaders who on the 20th of this month are going to be tried for upsetting things. Um, I guess it's criminal. And the whole thing is ludicrous. The, 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 the union says... Uh, we're not going to accept that deal, and uh, which leads to uh, more austerity in the country. They already they already got their wages cut in half, and um, just so the bankers could can get paid back, and they lent money that they never earned. They just created it out of thin air, and and we also have a strike coming up. And uh, the money to finance the Greek uh, economy has not been forthcoming. And uh, the reason for that is because of the disagreement 
the labor union and others. And uh, uh, I, I think there's a very good chance that uh, Greece will refuse. Uh, they put their election off until April, which was ludicrous. I mean, the uh, the election should have been held in early February like it was promised. No, no, that's not what's going to happen. And so you have a fly in the ointment, so to speak, and uh, I think it's there for good, uh, good in the sense for uh, for time, so to speak. And so I think uh, that could uh, cause some real consternation in Europe. Um, and I think eventually it'll bring down the euro because others are going to follow. And uh, so with that said, uh, there's going to be a lot of bumps along the way this year. But still, the growth is going to be there because the, the money is going to be supplied. And uh, you can probably carry the economy out over the next two or three years. So uh, what they've done is liquefy Europe to a great extent. And they're already doing uh, this Operation Twist in the United States. And as well, um, behind the scenes, they're you know, buying uh, toxic assets from banks and not letting anybody know about it. QE3 should be announced in June, but it'll already have been going for six months. And, you know, we, we projected things like this before, and they happened. Because all the characters involved are crooks. They lie about everything. Arch criminals. And so we're going to get a little pickup in the economies of Europe, England, and the United States this year, and maybe growth of one and a half, two percent, maybe a little bit more in some of the countries. And um, then uh, we have to uh, probably next year deal with uh, the ongoing problem of people leaving the Eurozone. And um, it's a hard one to call. Now, there's two reasons why gold and silver go up. One is because of currencies, and two, because of inflation. Last two and a half years, I feel, in spite of the existence of high inflation, uh, gold and silver, but particularly gold, has appreciated in value because it's being considered a currency. And why do I say that? Well, there's a whole bunch of sovereign governments out there buying it. I mean, they wouldn't be doing that unless they thought it was money. Uh, the second reason I said was uh, inflation. And with what they're doing in Europe and the United States, uh, there'll be plenty of inflation. And so where are we going with this? We're going to higher prices. You saw a major operation by the U.S. government and other central banks and so on in knocking the price of uh, gold and silver down since last April. Nine months. It's a long time. It was a dreadful year that shouldn't have been. But when you have corporatist, fascist government like they have in Europe and the United States, and England, then you get this kind of result. And so with that said, uh, gold and silver are going to do very well. Yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time before those, both of those start going back up. They can't keep gold and silver down forever, despite all the shenanigans they've attempted to do so. And silver's been down you know, a lot recently, and I, I'm still convinced, like you were talking about, that they're not going to be able to hold this beast down and once it starts skyrocketing, uh, if you haven't gotten on the boat yet for gold and silver, uh, it's going to be gone. I mean, you're going to be stuck with fiat paper currency that's going to be utterly worthless. Now, let me, let me give you an example. And this is caused by these people who are charters, waivers, 
and cyclists. They just will not understand that in manipulated markets, you can't use those things. I mean, look at Richard Russell. He's been upside down for I don't know how long. It's not his fault. He just doesn't get it. The markets are rigged. And you can't use those kind of technical things in rigged markets. Um, example, I'm a fundamentalist. Uh, just in the last year and a half, I had one stock go from four and a half to 19, and the other stock went from a six to 16. Now, I don't know that there's anybody else out there, I haven't seen any, of people who pick stocks that have done that well in the last year or so. Why is that? Well, I don't use those things. So what happens is these poor people that don't know who knows what and who doesn't know what, they listen to these writers and uh, this is going down and that's going down and I got a letter today from this guy. He said, I missed them both because I listened to uh, other writers who said that the market was going to go down on these two items and the shares would go down. And in the case of what you chose, that didn't happen. And look at all the money this man lost. I mean, even if he, even if he only uh, had a thousand shares of each, which is a, a nominal amount, a total uh, investment, a little over 10,000, uh, one of them uh, went up um, uh, 14 points, would be conservative, and uh, the other uh, 10 points, that's 24, and uh, 2,000 shares, a man lost $50,000 because they listened to these meatheads. Yeah, I mean, I, I am convinced, Bob, that these meatheads, these individuals are putting out false information intentionally in order to con people out of their money. You're right, they are. And some of them are either compensated one way or the other by the federal government and have been for a long time. And I run into instances <coughs> where others who go on programs will tell people who have, have programs, uh, we won't go on your program unless you kick Chapman off the program. And that's a fact. It goes on all the time. It works about 1% of the time. But they do that. And I, put, I went through the same thing between 1967 and 1978. 11 years. These people, newsletter writers, some of whom are writing today, some of them are dead already, but uh, they're still operating, some of them. And they kept me out of, and this was an overt effort. They kept me, and they didn't even know me. I mean, I didn't, I didn't write at the time except for my own, uh, uh, my own uh, subscribers. I had a monthly that I put out for them. And they would not let me into any of these conferences. And finally, a conference uh, decided that they wanted me in, and I went in. And I just blew them away. I was always rated number one in workshops, especially, and uh, as well as speaking. Uh, there's only once in about 15, let's see, in about a dozen years that I was second in speaking, only once. And they were furious. They tried to do everything they could to get me out. But that's the kind of crap that goes on in that industry. And I've just seen it happen again. Uh, but I know how to fix them. Uh, if they wanted action, they came to the right place. <laughs> Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And uh, speaking of all these bailouts going on, uh, President Obama, the dear leader, 
is now asking Congress for an additional $1.2 trillion increase in uh, the nation's borrowing limit. I mean, I, I mean, I guess the sky's the limit for these guys, Bob. Well, he's separated from reality. But it's not him. He does what he's told. I mean, he doesn't make any decisions. He just, they just say, hey, hey, dummy, go out there. Here's your speech. It's on the teleprompter. Uh, you know, just go through it and uh, play the smoke and mirrors for these idiots out here. And that's and you can go back watching uh, basketball or, you know, uh, take another trip to Hawaii and, and maybe even take a swim in shark-infested waters. I mean, <laughs> why not? Yeah. I know somebody went to high school with him and uh, had some very interesting tales to tell you as a subscriber. I, I didn't ask. He, he, he told me. And the guy was a nothing, absolute zero in school in Hawaii. Anyway, with that said, um, where are we headed now? Well, I, I find it interesting that he's this week asking Congress for you know, $1.2 trillion, obviously you're right about them, him being told what to do. And if you remember last week when we were, you know, when you were on the program, you know, I played a clip where he was, you know, talking about how if Congress doesn't go along with him, he'll do it on his own. So, I mean, is he going to, if Congress doesn't go along with uh, raising the national bar and limit by $1.2 trillion, is his handlers telling him basically, well, screw Congress, we'll raise it anyways. Is that a possibility? It's a lead pipe cinch. You get anything he wants immediately. It's an election year. All these people have paid off except a handful. They all work for the same party, the same group of people, the same group of criminals. Oh, they don't think they're criminals. I mean, if it's legal, I mean, I can go out and do that. You saw the testimony uh, of uh, Abramoff the uh, super-duper um, lobbyist who told... Uh, I watched the program. He told them exactly what they were doing that was just inside the law and all the things that they were doing in breaking the law. And they do it every day. And they're all connected, so, you know, nothing happens. Exactly. That's America today. I mean, there's no hope for young people. If we don't get Ron Paul in... Uh, young people may as well leave the country. And then I, I noticed yesterday there's been a submission by the president, and he wants to reward companies that bring jobs back to America, and he uh, in turn uh, wants to uh, do away with the tax advantage that they have. These are transnational conglomerates that pull all of their manufacturing and service jobs out of America and put them in Timbuktu someplace and then they make gazillions of dollars and pay no taxes well they're reversing the thing now we'll bring jobs back if you pay us absolutely incredible they're going to do it and 98% of the public won't even know what they're doing because they don't care or they're too dumb to understand and of course in doing that they'll bring jobs back in the United States and um, that's their way of weaning the old system back in. And uh, so that's the next step. And then do you have, well, what is that called? There's a new act they've got up that they want to get past uh, uh, to, Amer uh, to American citizens. Uh, no matter where you are, we can charge you with this, that, and the other thing. And you know, take you by the back of the neck and if you're living in Johannesburg, South Africa, we'll bring you home and, and uh, we'll try you for whatever we think we can try you for. It's, it's unbelievable. It is. You know, I, I had somebody come to me, a subscriber today, and say, well, I want to renounce my U.S. citizenship. I said, well, what other citizenship do you have? And he said, none. I said, well, you don't want to do that. No, I mean, you, you definitely don't because they, they'll use that as an excuse to come after you in so many ways. I mean, especially when, you know, dealing with firearms. I mean, when you go to a gun store to buy a firearm, you know, on the checklist, because you have to fill out these, this background information, I mean, you have to be a U.S. citizen. 
And if you're not a U.S. citizen, if you renounce your citizenship, well, tough luck. No gun for you. That's true. So they, they really do have us, you know, in a corner. And it's sad, but that's the reality of the situation. And that's, and that's done by design, as you and I both know, Bob. Well, you're going to uh, see more and more and more and more of, uh, of this sort of thing if Ron Paul is not elected. And if you want to uh, go broke or get killed or be put in a camp, don't vote for him. Somebody's got to do all those things, lose their money, lose their freedom, lose everything. Oh, it may as well be you, dummy. Unbelievable. Just simply unbelievable. It is. And you did touch on something that is promising, the fact that so many young Americans in the 20s and 30s, such as myself, are rallying behind Ron Paul because we get it. We've actually you know, done the research, gone online, stopped listening to the mainstream media propaganda piece, and we, we see the reality of the situation. And the only one that is talking about you know, what the important issues – is Congressman Ron Paul, and that's why he has so many people, so many young people in different age groups and dem- demographics rallying to him. And th- it's just funny because the mainstream media and the GOP neocon establishment just don't get it. Well, it looks like he is very, very strong backing in those age groups. Uh, what's pathetic, although uh, not special, uh, is the uh, older people, my age. Uh, they just don't care. They simply don't care. And I've seen this over the last maybe 25 years, and they just want to have enough money to last them until they get out of here. And as you know, everybody dies. And so th- there's no help there at all. It's a dead demographic, simply because they don't care. They don't care about their children, their grandchildren, their friends, they don't care about anything. How do I know? I lived among them. I'm their age. I saw it all go, Dan. I lived in God's waiting room, better known as Florida. <laughs> anyway, I, I see anybody... the, yeah, I see the the older demographic in, in several. They break they break up into several categories. The one that you just mentioned, how they they don't care, how they're just they're just biding their time, waiting for the end, uh, just worried about number one. Then there's, there's two other groups that I've noticed from my own personal experience is those older people that still see America the same way they saw America back during World War II. They're, they're, they're stuck in that mindset. They're, they're lost in time. They see this country as the America was back then as opposed to what it's become. And then there's another group, Bob, that know exactly what's going on but are completely terrified to do anything about it. They're just scared to death. So they think if they, they keep their mouth shut, if they bury their head in the sand like so many other Americans, that they'll be left alone. Don't work that way no more. No, it doesn't. Not at all. But Oh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, before we uh, continue, I'd like to give a shout-out to uh, the Department of Homeland Security because apparently, Bob, they are monitoring Drudge, Huffington Post, New York Times, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, which means they'll probably be listening to this discussion, and uh, more uh, sites and uh, blogger networks as part of their social networking media capability program. So, hello, Big Sis. How are you doing? <laughs> but isn't it funny, Bob, I how think, we're, be- we're becoming East Germany? <laughs> yeah, well, this is Stasi. I work against Stasi, too. and They were the worst of the worst. Uh, the KGB, the NKVD, they were bad. Uh, but these guys... Uh, they had no class. They were animals. And they recruited everybody could get their hands on. I mean, after the wall came down, they found out that 70% of the people in the in eastern Germany were working for Stasi. And then this guy, Marcus Wolf, who was running the thing, uh, who made Adolf Hitler look like small time uh, in, in, the, in the art of killing people. And they didn't do anything to him. It was some deal made ahead of time. And Marcus Wolf went to Washington as a celebrity. Now, what does that tell you? Yeah, I mean, look look what happened with Operation Paperclip, you know, years before. I mean, they brought over all those Nazi scientists who did all sorts of atrocities to slave workers to build the, you know, vengeance rockets. And, you know, they, they were had the role 
you know, the red carpet rolled out for them. That's true. So our government has for a long time been complicit, and uh, I guess they'll probably continue uh, to be that way as long as as we allow them to. Now, that was weird. For a moment there, you cut out, Bob, so I guess they are listening to us. So, hello, big sis. <laughs> but what, what oh, would you say? Oh, do it every day. I know. For years and years, who cares? Yeah. It's sad, though, because, you know, I think that so many people on the other side listening to the conversations that you have with so many different people out there in the movement, I think I think a lot of them are well-intentioned, and they just they're just following orders. But, unfortunately... You know, if they pick the wrong side when the time comes, I mean, when the dust settles, there are plenty, like you mentioned a moment ago, in Nuremberg that were just following orders, and look what it got them. Well, Bob, that was pretty creepy. They knocked me off the Internet for like a few minutes. I mean, I don't, I don't think that was an accident either. I think they were sending us a friendly little message. I mean, everything went offline. I mean, the Skype went offline, my Internet was gone, and whew. Isn't you know. it great to live in a fascist state? Oh, yeah, I, I just love... And, these, and uh, these, these meatballs who get paid for this, they think they're doing the right thing. Yeah. I mean, do. I wonder That's what sad. they're going to do when people start shooting back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just love the fault. We the might remind freedom, them, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't, we, we might remind them, you know, that we don't take prisoners. They should keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, once, once we get to that point, as we were talking about a moment ago, before we were so friendly, you know, we had a friendly interruption you know, cut off from everything, uh, you know, there's going to come a point where, you know, they're going to have to make a decision. Either they stand with the people and the Constitution and Bill of Rights and freedom and liberty, or they're going to stand with the forces of tyranny. And when the dust settles, you know, eventually they're going to have their Nuremberg. And I was just following orders. That line didn't work for them either. Well, you live and learn. And uh, nothing upsets me anymore. I don't get mad. I get even. Yeah, and so there'll come a time. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not – I know for a fact that there's going to come a time when, you know, it's all going to hit the fan. And one of the reasons why I do what I do is not only to wake up my fellow Americans and my, my family and friends, but to also try and wake up those that are working in law enforcement and in the military and even in the government because they're people too at the end of the day. I mean, they have family. They have lives. They have friends, and the decisions they make affect all of us. And, you know, they're making some really bad choices. They're following some really nasty people. That's true. I mean, especially those that are leading us towards a, a possible huge confrontation with Iran, which could, you know, become something even bigger. I mean, this came out today. The U.S. is now moving an aircraft strike carrier group into the Arabian Sea with another one on the way. And this is just off the heels of that assassination of an Iranian general the other day. Well, if that is the case, uh, Russia has already sent another uh, ship into the uh, the ocean off of Syria. So I would think that the Russians will send down a couple more. I mean, this is a very, very you know you don't want to ca- try to call the Russians bluff. You don't want to. They got a lot of guts. They have smart people, and they don't give up. You know, I talked to people who fought in the Eastern Front in the Second World War. He said they would come at us with no weapons. We couldn't kill them fast enough. And it, it, sometimes the kill ratio was 50, 60, 70 to 1. So, uh, America, you really don't want to tangle with Russia because they're the real McCoy. I'm not saying they're better than Americans, but they're certainly equal to them, and their equipment is too. And you shouldn't be doing that. I would leave the <clears throat> sleeping giant alone. I shouldn't. I certainly wouldn't pick a fight with them. No, I mean it's a very, very bad decision that the the neocon establishment, the powers that be in the military, that are pushing this, you know, conflict. I mean it's it's insanity. I mean trying to cause this. I mean, it's it's one thing to have to deal with the Iranians because they're going to fight back. We saw what happened during the Iranian-Iraqi war, how messy that was. But to throw in the Iranians with the Russians and also with the Chinese, 
you know, they, they've been training for a long time now. I mean, they have one of the largest armies on, on the planet. And, you know, we're about to get ourselves into a very, very nasty global quagmire. Well, what's going to happen is that um, uh, somebody is going to leave uh, work one day and uh, leave New York City and go down to southern Jer- Jersey where they live and look at the nightly news and say there's New York City and they'll see a large hole in the ground. This is what these people are looking for. People in major cities are really, really terrible targets. They haven't done anything, but, you know, they're going to be targeted. It all depends on how they want to run this war. We'll see. I know that Moscow and St. Petersburg are surrounded by by the uh, best anti missile uh, equipment available uh, will it stop everything coming in or something is coming in probably maybe we won't know until we get there I know that when they were using the Patriot missiles in uh, in Israel during the last conflict some years ago uh, they were very ineffective so we'll see yeah and it's just sad because and, I, and I've mentioned this before, Bob, is that I, I see basically World War I repeating itself here. You have nations aligning up against nations, and you're just waiting for that spark to kick things off. But as I, as I said mo- last week, there's a big difference. I mean, the uh, killing weapons have gotten way more efficient, and there's going to be a lot more lives lost if it does come down to a third world war. Tremendous loss of life. Tremendous. And, you know, um, most people haven't been subjected to war for a long, long time. And they're not going to be able to handle it. No, so, I mean, it's, it's a two-pronged attack. We have this, this possible, you know, revolutionary war brewing here between the tyrannical government and the people. But at the same time, there's also the possibility for a global conflict. And I think that the powers that be are going to try and push for that instead because – that's going to force a lot of people to follow in lock and step behind the government in the United States because they're like, oh, well, you've got to support the government now. You've got to support the country. We're at war, you know. You have to do all this, and they're going to do all the patriotic propaganda that countries do during a wartime, and they're going to round up people that speak out like myself and others. Well, uh, you can look after me more in this, when we're in the same internment camp. <laughs> Us elderly people will need help from the strong young people. Uh-huh. Listen, let me tell you something. They have a pick me up. I last 15 seconds. They take me out back and put one in the back of my head. I'm not well, that dumb. Yeah, I, I I concur. I mean, I mean, I unless they catch me completely off guard, you know, I'm not going to let them take me away. And I know a number of people have said the same thing. They feel the same exact way. We're not going with you. No thanks. If we have to choose how we're going to, you know, end our lives, we'd rather go down fighting than rotting slowly, knowing that eventually you're going to, you know, put one in the back of the head or line us up for quote unquote showers. So I mean, if I have to pick which way I'm going to go, I'm going to go down swinging, as they say. But I mean, it's just continuing to get worse and worse, Bob. But the good news is, as they continue to tighten their grip. You know, more and more people are slipping through their fingers and waking up and rallying behind Ron Paul. And, I mean, look, here's a, I mean, here's a very promising sign in New Hampshire. Ron Paul got more votes than New Gingrich, Santorum, and Perry combined. So, despite their best effort to corrupt things, to rig elections, I think the cat is out of the bag. The people want Ron Paul. The question is, can they keep him from getting elected? That's really what it amounts to. Yeah, and, and they're going to try everything. You and I both know that. They're trying everything. They're belittling him in the mainstream media. They'll bring up polls, and they'll, they'll talk about people like, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. No mention of Ron Paul, even though he's clearly in second man place. You know, it's obviously a two-man race between Ron Paul and Romney. But the mainstream media is doing this. The GOP establishment's doing this. They're demonizing him. They're once again coming out with the whole, well, he's anti-Israel. He's anti-Semitic. You don't want to vote for him, Christians. I mean, they, they have that coming out as well, this uh, 
what evangelical neocon uh, Gary Bauer, I came across a one-minute advertisement from him the other day. And, you know, he's lock in step with the neocons, you know, and they're going to do everything well, they what, can. What, the does he do for a, what does he do for a living? I think he's a pastor, but, I mean, he's obviously a, a neocon puppet, you know, one of these Zionists out there. And, you know, it's not, it's not going to stop people from supporting Ron Paul. I mean, they, they try and dig up as much dirt as they can, and they have nothing, com- especially when you compare it to what Romney and Newt Gingrich and Santorum have. I mean, all their attacks well, on Ron Paul has failed. You know, uh, the, the game is not going to be played evenly, and it never is. So uh, do what you got to do. Exactly. And, you know, there's way more dirt on those other candidates than Ron Paul, and they can keep trying with all their might. All it does is it you know, makes us even madder and rallies even more people to us because we go out there and we try even harder to wake people up. And we got about a minute left, Bob. How can people get the international forecaster? The forecaster is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Published on Wednesday and Saturday by email. It runs around 35, 40 pages each time. We have a hard uh, copy that goes out uh, twice a month. Everything you need to know each week is in the publication. If you go on a free introductory copy, you go to theinternationalforecaster.com. The international f o r e c a s t e r dot com, or you can go to www dot i n t f o r e c a s t e r dot com, intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to ask questions, we answer everyone. If you'd like a copy of the two publications, no problem. And if you'd like, we will send you a free. Updated copy of our latest recommendations on gold and silver shares. You do that by going to Bob, B O B, at I N T F O R E C A S T E A R dot com. Bob at Intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to call toll free, that number is 877 479 8178. 877 877- Four seven nine eight one seven eight. You can get poppies there. Those of you who want to be sub- subscribers, that's a place to go to. They have a special deal where you can get a free one-year subscription. It's a terrific deal. Take advantage of it. Definitely. If you haven't gotten the International Forecaster, I would suggest you get it. It's very, very informative. Bob, thank you for so much for joining us today. I will talk to you next week, sir. You get it. Bye-bye, everyone.